everyone. Thanks for your time. Apologies for keeping you waiting. Okay, well, you ready to go, are we? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm here, obviously, at your request, and I thank you for the chance to discuss this with you. Uh, the issue is about police uh, gratuities. Um, with the service, uh, as we indicated we would uh, last year, revised our policy. Uh, the policy is still in the stage of consultation, and it's gone out to both police unions. Um, unfortunately, it was leaked, um, apparently, and uh, it was the subject of an article in uh, today's Courier Mail. If I could just talk a little bit about where we're going with the new policy, uh, which it is intended to introduce from the 1st of July, subject to um, appropriate consultation and uh, everything being in order in that regard. Uh, broadly, there are probably three areas that I would just like to talk to for a moment. The first is the issue of police um, receiving free entry into nightclubs and licensed premises and free alcohol. Uh, that's just not acceptable under any circumstances. I have maintained a consistent position on that and um, I must say I, I hope that practice is not um, existing at all uh, and certainly it's not uh, allowable and nor is it justifiable uh, at all. So that's really quite clear cut. Um, at the other end, uh, at the other extremity, is the issue of police receiving free transport and in particular here in the southeast corner, free rail travel. Uh, and that's something that I'm not opposed to at all. I think there are benefits for that in the travelling public. I think the presence of police uh, on public transport is a helpful thing uh, and can help in terms of, particularly an officer in uniform, uh, can help in maintaining good order uh, on the public transport system or an officer who may be off duty, uh, sorry, in plain clothes, I should say, um, is able to intervene if there are problems. So that's something I support. I've had discussions in the past with QRail about that and they support that as well. The, the, the more complex and difficult area is the middle ground and that is the area of police receiving discounts at fast food outlets. And we tend to um, refer to McDonald's but it's not only McDonald's, there are others as well. And there are two sides to that argument and I'd just like to expand a little bit at the moment if I could uh, on, on some of the two sides to that argument. But the service has considered that, the senior executive has considered it, and our view uh, is that um, that practice has had its day and it's time for us to move on and that if we are to be a truly professional police department, then receiving a half price discount food uh, isn't um, entirely appropriate and it's something we should bring an end to. Having said that, again, can I say that we recognise that there are two sides to that debate and that argument. As a result, we've formulated a draft policy that reflects that view, uh, that it's not appropriate for police to receive uh, discounted uh, food at fast food outlets, food or coffee, uh, and we have consulted with the unions. That consultation is ongoing. Uh, some of the arguments against the practice uh, are that it encourages, or well, it enables, I guess, extra patrolling of the fast food outlets, um, that there could be a belief, it wouldn't necessarily be so, that there could be a belief that if the fast food, fast food outlet uh, made a complaint to police uh, that they might receive more favourable treatment than another um, uh, premises. Um, there's very much the public view which is important and that leads into appearance. And one example that's been cited is this, that if a police officer on duty in uniform goes, uh, not in a vehicle, but um, to the front counter or the counter at McDonald's uh, on a Saturday at lunchtime and places an order for him or herself and colleagues back at the police station, and beside the police officer is a member of the public with children making exactly the same order. And the member of the public pays $20, and for the identical order the police officer pays $10. What does the member of the public think about that? And those things are important and there's something we have to consider as well. So the issue of public acceptance and public view is something we need to be mindful of. The arguments in support of the discount food uh, include that uh, it is not something the police solicit, it is offered by the company, and that's true in, uh, in all cases that I'm aware of in any event, that it's convenient, uh, that it's a widespread practice, and in some cases it certainly is. Uh, although in some jurisdictions there is a trend um, to limit the practice as well. Uh, and the, the amount of uh, money is uh, a relatively modest and small amount of money. So having uh, made those views, um, can I just again restate 
that the policy is still in draft form. We are still consulting. Our intention is to introduce it on the 1st of July and we'll keep the media informed as to how uh, the consultative stage of the policy unfolds and um, where it goes from here. Uh, happy to take any questions. Unions arguing it's not much different to lawyers or journalists belonging to union memberships like Union Shopper or professional bodies which do offer fairly significant discounts as well. Yeah, that's a good... Food yeah. Yes, that, that's a good point and, and it's one certainly that the union um, are making at the moment and I believe certainly have raised in the past. Uh, police and probably members of other emergency services and perhaps the Australian Defence Forces um, in, in a similar sense to lawyers and other professionals could possibly be entitled to similar discounts. Um, I don't know that that, and that, that's not an unusual practice, that if you're a member of a professional body that a particular company may give you a discount. I do think though that there is a distinction between that and getting half price food at a fast food outlet. So I don't think it's entirely fair to say that it's exactly the same. I don't think it is. Are you talking about just the, the, the level, the, you know, the, the, I guess the, the amount of discounts, say instead of, if say, instead of 50% with the police, say if you're with a, a union, you, you, you may only get, what, 20% off? Is that what you're talking about? Or? No, no, with, with the discounted um, food and coffee, what we're saying, what the police department, what I'm saying as your commissioner, is that a discount, because you are a police officer on duty, uh, is something that we shouldn't accept. Would you object to, say, the police union uh, I guess creating a, a discount card to organise, basically mm. handle through the police union for them to get discounts? Yeah, look, I'd have to, that's a good question um, and I can't give you an answer because I would have to see how that worked. Uh, if the police union were to do that in partnership with the fast food outlets, uh, that would be an interesting concept because what it would mean, as I would understand it, is it would be a distinction from the normal use of that practice, which is if you're a member of a particular body, and again, be it a lawyer or a, or a teacher or, or a doctor or a dentist, that a, say a book company will give you a 10% or 20% discount on the books that they sell because you produce that card. Uh, the distinction here, and I've not heard of this before, it would be the expansion of that card, as I understand it, to a police officer... Um, and at the moment my understanding is the discount is only offered by fast food outlets when the officer is on duty. So there would be some complexity there about how the card would work. Would it only be that the officer was on duty? Would it be at all times that a police officer on production on the card gets a discount and what the discount would be? So I'd have to take that on notice and look at that, look at the legality of it. It would certainly circumvent our policy intention, there's no doubt about that. So I can't give you an answer on that today. But if the union put that to us, and they haven't done so formally yet, um, and it's supported by the fast food outlet saying, yes, we will do this, we'll consider it. But I can't give you a definitive position on it at the moment. I guess in principle, though, not a bad idea? Uh, the concept? Well, again, it would circumvent our policy intent. But on the other hand, it may be that um, it would be lawful uh, for them to do that and for the fast food company to do that but I can't give you a firm answer on that at the moment. We'd have to look at the proposal and then consider it and get advice, legal advice on it. The bottom line, Commissioner, is what you're saying is that police have to just be seen to be a, uh, you know, above the law in respect of there no suspicion that it could lead to corrupt behaviour. Yeah, look, that's a really good point. Um, the, uh, to me, this is about public confidence uh, and our professionalism. And, and I'm not saying that in the past, and certainly no officer has breached uh, our policy in the past because our policy uh, has allowed this to happen in the past. I, I'm also of the view that I don't think um, this is the most serious matter we'll ever deal with within the police department. I do agree that there are two sides to this argument, but we've considered it really carefully and we believe that if we are to be a truly professional police department, and have the total confidence in the Queensland community, which is our aspiration and, and our goal and our aim, then the, the time has come for us to bring an end to the practice of half-price discount food to police who are on duty. Commissioner, uh, what do you say to the argument then that the police have a pretty hard job? There's, there's perhaps not that many perks to being a, a police officer. Um, what's wrong with mm. giving them, you know, get, getting some, some cheaper food, some fast food? Mm. Look, it is a hard job, that's quite right, and that is one of the arguments uh, for it, uh, in support of it. Um, but, however, uh, we have considered that, um, and we think that, again, on balance, uh, it is a difficult job. There's no argument about that. Um, but 
police officers know that it's a difficult job. They know that when they take it on. They know that every day when they go out to work. But we think that on balance, um, and again, there are arguments for and against, but on balance, we think in terms of true professionalism and the public image, this, the, the better position is not to accept this discount. He said if you bring this new changes on July 1 that he would mm. continue to offer the 50%. Would that then become an illegal practice? No, I don't think so. I, look, th there are views, uh, and I think they're extreme views, that laws should be created, and they're certainly not views the police department has ever expressed, that laws should be created to make it illegal. I, I don't believe that's so, and that would never be my recommendation to government to do that. Uh, and um, you are quite right, uh, I, I guess, in raising that as a point that that would make it more difficult for the police department to enforce the policy if a fast food pr proprietor says, well, I don't care what the police department says. Um, if you come to my premises, you'll get a discount. That would make it harder uh, because, uh, again, this is not something where we're going to be sending people from ethical standards command out to spy on people. It doesn't warrant or justify any, any of that sort of behaviour. This is something that I hope, if it becomes policy, our officers would accept and embrace and would simply not engage in the practice. Well, when it comes to that punishment and or investigation, what sort of punishment would they uh, be? Look, that's a long way down the road yet. Uh, the policy's not even in place yet. We're still in the consultative stage. Um, and I'm happy to discuss that further at some future time. Um, but we, we, look, we expect really high standards of police officers. Um, but it's quite right that we do. It's quite right that we do. Um, and we want the community to have confidence in us. You've, we've got 15,000 people in the police department. Last Thursday, we swore in our 10,500th officer. We've got 10,500 sworn officers. Um, inevitably, each year, some of those officers will do the wrong thing and have to face disciplinary action. And in the worst cases, they'll be dismissed from the service. Um, I, I guess any large police department in the world would, would be in that situation. But what we... W no, nothing stays still. And if you look at how things were 20 years ago, straight after the Fitzgerald inquiry, there was enormous change. But nothing stays still. Uh, and we have to continuously revive, uh, revise, I should say, what we do and, and what our practices are. And this is an issue that's come to light in recent times. It's been the subject of debate for some years. And uh, our position, my position, is that we think that the day has come for this to come to an end um, and that um, we would want our officers... Uh, to pay full price for their meals, their food, their coffee, as members of the public do. To your knowledge, what happens in other jurisdictions? Uh, good question. It's very widespread. Uh, some jurisdictions adopt a sim similar policy to the one that we hope to bring in from the 1st of July. Uh, no, I can't. And it's not for me to comment on other jurisdictions. With respect, I'd have to ask you to go to them. But there's a developing trend in the United States of America for this practice to be um, not allowed by police departments. Our other jurisdictions in, uh, in Australia and New Zealand have varying policies on it. My understanding is that some uh, frown on it and, and don't uh, support it, uh, where others allow it. And my reading of other policies are they're, they're a bit ambiguous about it. But, but it's probably better, and I say this with the greatest respect, for if you wish to, for you to go to the other departments and ask them yourself rather than me to speak on their behalf. Do you believe this practice is, this approach is best practice? And if so, what research should you base it on? Yeah. Um, th there's not a lot of research, and um, it's more an evolving situation in terms of our, the community's expectation. I mean, we, we, we exist as an organisation to serve the community and to provide for their safety and security. Uh, we need their, their confidence and their support in doing that. Uh, I'm sure that if you surveyed the community uh, today, there would be a mixed view on this. Uh, the most recent research in Queensland that I'm aware of, in my view, is really quite dated. It goes back to 1993. As I understand, it was conducted by uh, Dr Tim Prenzler from Griffith University. With the greatest respect to Dr Prenzler, I do think that's fairly dated research. Nonetheless, that research indicated that the vast majority of people surveyed, I think over two-thirds, uh, weren't supportive of the practice of police getting a discount. Probably needs to be borne in mind that that was straight after Fitzgerald. Um, so, um, but look, we've, we've considered it as the senior executive of the service. I've considered it. Um, and again, it's one of those situations, and I hope I'm not being too repetitive for you, but uh, where there are arguments for and against, uh, but we felt that we needed to firm up on our position 
we have, and our view is um, that uh, it's it's a practice that we don't feel sh we don't believe, and I don't believe should continue. Just on another matter, an Afghan refugee died overnight in the detention centre. Is that your area to investigate, or is that not being a Sorry, where did that happen? Uh, the social justice group has just sent an email out saying another Afghan refugee has died in a detention centre in Queensland. Yes, Th those matters are investigated by the state police. Uh, of course, uh, was that a Churga near Weta? Yes, yes, uh, that would, and that's the case and that would be the second one um, in recent times. No, those matters were investigated by the state police for the state coroner. Any death uh, in Queensland is subject, uh, any unnatural death in Queensland is subject to investigation by the coroner and the coroner uses uh, the Queensland Police Service for that purpose. So we would be, uh, I expect, investigating that death on behalf of the state coroner. Um, whilst the property is Commonwealth property, my understanding of the federal and state law is that the federal law doesn't enable a death investigation. So there's no charge of murder, for example, under federal law. It's under state law. I'm not suggesting this is a murder, of course, for a moment, uh, but that's how it works. Okay, any other questions? All right, well, thank you for your time on this issue, and I undertake to get back to you as um, the situation you know, unfolds and uh, as we firm up and uh, implement the policy in due course. Thank you.